welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Lynn. <laughs> and I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us as we chat about current topics in the quilting world, techniques to improve your own projects, and fun stories about our quilts. So, our episodes come out twice a month, complemented by virtual sew-ins and weekly podcasts. Learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. So, today we're going to be talking about marking and basting quilts. So, Lynn, what has been up? Well, you know, I say this, I think, every episode, but I took a class. Shocking. <laughs> it's my shocked face. And you took a class, too. That's true. I did take a class, And too. we took it from the same person. <gasps> we did, but not the same class. No, we took two different classes. Well, because they offer two different classes, and I took the Thursday class, and you took the Friday class. No, I took the Saturday class. Oh, Saturday class. Friday right. class is the meeting. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. So we took a class from Wendy Butler Burns, who is so delightful. Oh, my gosh. Yes, completely. Yeah. And I had taken her craftsy class, but I was like, well, I will take that class in person, too, not realizing how awesome she just You took her craftsy class? Oh, yeah, I did. The pictorial quilt yeah. one. I took her crafts to class. I didn't know you took it. Like, you didn't tell me you took it. I forgot it. twinsies. <laughs> How do we not know this about each other? That's funny. So, <laughs> I took her crafts to class, which I totally enjoyed, except for the part that when I took it, I was on the elliptical, which I didn't enjoy that part. I'm just saying. I'm thinking... But that was more the elliptical part than actually the class. So I had it playing while I was actually sewing something else. <laughs> I, I think I do that with craftsy classes. You know, like I take, I'll take the class, but I'm not doing what the class is talking about. Yeah. I'm just kind of doing other, I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, but when I took it in person, I felt like, oh my gosh, I now own this knowledge mm. because she was just so thorough and I really just enjoyed it. It was a great class. She didn't even make fun of my um, really old 1988 thread that I brought to you. You brought, not, how do you know I, it's I make not, an assumption okay. because it was Grandma Eddie's and, you know, she passed several right, years ago. several years and ago. And before that, she stopped sewing several <laughs> years before that. And there's... So you think it's 40-year-old fabric? I, thread, yeah. It, and it's metallics. You know, it's just always <laughs> super, super delightful to put Did your machine. Did it not break? Oh, it shredded all the... So all you over threw the place. it away. Oh no. You kept it? I did keep so if you have if you have thread that shreds, you're not gonna you But here's what I did with it. Okay. So the project that I was making was textured Tweety Falls in Love. So it's two birds and a little textured nest. And the nest is made out of bits of thread and ribbon and fibers and all this stuff. So I cut off snips of it and like distributed it through the class, like, here's your crappy thread fairy. Ta-da. <laughs> and then we all used little bits of gold thread. In oh, our nests. Okay. No, I still have some left. So I got to make a lot more to, nests. I've got to make a nest this week, and I'm going to put you. You need to tell me how to do it. Okay. Okay. I know how to do it. Okay. Well, this is what I did. So I, I actually brought mine today to show you. So we did this applique piecing, which is a really cool technique, and then we also did where you scrunch up the fabric, and so it gives you more texture which was really kind of neat. And then we use this texture magic um, technique where you sew on top of this texture magic, you sew your uh, fabric on top of the texture magic, then you apply heat to it. Steam. And steam. Steam. Steam, and it shrinks up 40 or 30%, mm -hmm. 30%. Yeah. So it gives you this, you know, scrunched up kind of texture look. And then I did a little thread painting with the... Um, you know, the stem or stems, the branches, branches, words are hard, <laughs> the branches on the trees. So, but it was fun. It was a great class. And I really enjoyed this applique technique. And I think that that's going to give me, I mean, I'm going to finish this at some point in my life. <laughs> One day. One day. Episode when, 616, here we come. <laughs> when Pam doesn't give me other things I have to do before then. Well, if you would just do them and get them done, <laughs> wouldn't be the problem. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. I, there's a, you know, quilt that's been hanging above. We've talked about it before, but I felt like this applique technique I'm going to be able to use for that quilt. So cool. I'm pretty excited about it. 
pretty yeah. excited about it. I finished my project, so we'll put a picture of it in the show notes on our website for this episode. Yeah, she finished it the day she was took the class. You I went did. home and finished it. And I was super fancy. I put a little flange on the binding, too, because I was toying with doing an outside border no matter how wide, you know, when you fold the fabric and lay it next to your your piece to see, get a feel for like, oh, how wide does this need to be? It was always too wide. I'm like, I know, an eighth of an inch. I'm like, well, I'm not sewing an eighth of an inch border because <laughs> that's bananas. But I did a flange. Well, that's, a, I, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm looking forward to see it. Cool. So, so what we're going to talk about next is marking. Marking quilts. Marking quilts. I hate marking quilts. <laughs> I'm not saying it's my favorite thing to do, but, uh, you know, it's important, I think. <laughs> you don't mark your quilts, do you? So uh, Lynn texted me this idea, and I said, great. And then our second topic can be all how I spend all my free time from not marking quilts. So I... So, so you don't use any of the tools to mark quilts. So I will say, in general... I guide quilt design based on piecing because I don't do a lot of whole cloth or where there's a ton of negative space. I tend to do more traditionally piece. So my marking to me is where the intersections or where my points are in the piecing. And I know to go from there to whatever the next step is. So when you do that, though, you don't like take a ruler and actually mark your intersections with. I, don't, the... I haven't done a lot of straight lines unless it's with a walking foot. Oh, really? So I haven't marked it. Huh. Okay, so uh, if I want a straight line and I need to, of course, now sometimes I quilt with rulers and this is a long arm ruler. So I quilt with a long arm ruler and you need to know if you're using rulers with a long arm, it has to be the extra thick rulers. Or even on a domestic machine, you don't want to use your regular ruler for cutting on there or it will slide under your presser foot and you will bust a needle. And then it would be bad. You'll shoot your eye out. You'll shoot your eye out. That's true. So, but (laughs) if I'm... If I'm, like, I, I use this a lot to mark, because this one's got measurements on it, which is nice, mm-hmm. and it's a thicker one, um, but I'll mark where I want. Now, here's the other thing that we need to talk about, and one of these is very controversial. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. But I want to talk about this other stuff first. First, there's two, like, major marker things that people sell. One's the purple pin and the blue pin. The blue pin is water-soluble. So... Like a spray bottle, we'll take it out. The purple pen is disappearing. Water soluble. That's a hard lesson to learn, by the way. Oh, dear God. The very first quilt, very first quilt I did, this was the lesson right here. You marked the whole thing. I marked the whole quilt. Took me like five or six hours because I didn't know what I was doing. I was doing straight lines and making sure that I would had it right. I measured three and a half inches apart. All Then did cross hatch, you know. Went in the next day to quilt it. This is before my long arm. Went in the next day to quilt it. It was all gone. All of it, every freaking line, because of this purple pin. Not to call back to a Christmas story again, but it reminds me of when the dogs it was a bust Christmas in McQuill. and eat the turkey. No more turkey hash. No more t- turkey yes. soup. That was it. I walked in. I was like, "What happened?" And I was sore because it was on the floor. You know, because you're marking because it had to be all stretched out, and it was a king size quilt. King size quilt. The story doesn't get better. There was nothing about it that was good. So. I have a hate relationship with these purple bands, and I don't think I've bought them since. I'm pretty sure that one won't work then. Yes. Because they dry out. Yeah. I, so my experience with both of these, and I have used them, <clears> is that <throat> they don't last very long. And so then I just get no, mad. No, they like, don't. Oh, I'm not going to spend money. And I try to store them with the ink Yeah, so the down. ink runs towards the nib. Yeah, exactly. Um, but water-soluble I like. This one I like. Friction. And so I mark it with straight lines. You can use other templates to like do curves and stuff to mark. Um, I know a lot of people mark the stems of the feathers before they put the feathers in. And they may do the feathers freehand. Like I don't mark absolutely everything I'm sewing. I mark, like if I'm doing a circle and I'm filling in this circle, I may mark the outside of the circle Mm -hmm. and maybe divide it up but I won't mark everything I'm sewing in that circle. Yeah, and I've done similar because I did one quilt recently, um, our second sample of You Spin Me Right Round, and I was like, well, I need a big circle in there, so I got a dinner plate because that's how we roll at my house. And then, whoop. <laughs> yeah, you can use anything to mark. <laughs> and then just filled in with a spiral freehand inside of it. Yeah, um, 
Judy Madsen uses uh, cardboard or cardstock, mm -hmm. not cardboard, you could use cardboard, but cardstock and then draws whatever designs and then marks the outline of it with one of these blue water solubles. And then she may go in, this may be the only part that she marks is the outside line, but she'll fill it in with all of that. So you don't have to mark everything you're sewing kind of thing. It'll just give you the reference. Then once the lines, and, and I think this is true, and like I've done, like I'll just use whatever shape I'm interested in to fill in that negative space. Mm -hmm. And then you can turn this multiple ways. But cardstock cutting out, I mean, I don't know, it's like you play with paper and then you put it on there and trace around well, it. Well, it's easy too um, because that weight of cardstock prints out easily on most home printers. Right. So oh, you can yeah. find search for clip art yes. or, you know, any kind of simple line drawing, coloring book pages are another yes. good way yeah. to search for, you know. And there's tons of coloring book yeah. pages out there now. Yeah. So I, I really like these little tools. Now she'll also, um, you know, if you're going to use this over and over again and you want it to be more stable, you can also laminate it, mm -hmm. you know, to give you that stability to, like these are laminated. You know, but, so it gives us more tech. I will say, stiffer. though, like if you laminated this, then you'd have an edge. Yeah. Well, then you just deal with that edge. What's cool about it, though, is, you know, you spend all that time marking. When you start quilting, this is a big thing you have to get over. When you start quilting, um, don't be so freaked out if you're not hitting that line every time because it's going to disappear and nobody will know. Oh, no. No, they won't. No, they won't know. I promise you, they won't know. So you have to, you have to kind of get over the. Well, if I don't hit this edge exactly right, it's going to screw it up. No. So you're telling me <laughs> that the quilt police is in fact not an elephant that never forgets. Exactly. Mm. I know you're suspicious, mm. but it's true. Mm. It's true. It's true. So marking, I think, is good. You just have to get over the fact that if I miss that line or if I'm a little bit outside of it or a little bit inside of it, it's going to go away. It's not. Yeah. And, and I think people get caught up in that and they're taking stitches out. And I'm like, honey, you don't want to take those stitches out. <laughs> but what about I traveling? Because a lot of times when you're doing a marked design, you need to travel back over the same line. There, I think you do need to be slower. a little more careful. Slow slower. down. Slow down. Yeah. That helps if you slow or, down. Or you do every another eighth of an inch all the way around the thing you just did, just in call echo it a design quilt. choice. It's called echo quilting. It's a design choice. You echo quilt back. Echo quilting gets me out of a lot of spaces that I yeah. get trapped in. So if I can echo quilt back out, then I'm golden. Now, is your so the echo quilt is typically a quarter of an inch from the line that you just quilted. Do you do quarter inch, eighth inch, three eighths? I try to do a quarter of an inch, but you have to understand. So the the foot that's on my long arm is a quarter, the edge of that foot is a quarter of an inch from the needle. So if I keep the edge of that foot against the line that mm -hmm. I just stitched, I am a quarter of an inch away. And nobody's coming with any ruler to measure. Not yet. <laughs> the challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have a computer. Now, if you had a computer, then this, you know, you don't have to necessarily uh, mark. By that, you mean computerized design on your long arm. Correct. Okay. Or, uh, you know, <laughs> Do you live not in a just... cave with rocks? <laughs> you don't have a computer? Why are we on the internet? What's happening? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, granted, I don't have a computer on my long arm, but I do have an embroidery machine that I could quilt on. True. Which would be, I know people who do it, but I think it's bananas. It's. Well, there's so much change. prep to get everything lined up properly yeah. and not askew Ooh. and in the hoop and... Yes. And you've got... And then you've got this big... I wouldn't do it on a big quilt. Man, that'd be a cra crazy. Well, I think you need a Unless lot Unless of... you were quilting as you go. Unless it was quilting as you go. Then I think you can get away yeah, with it. Yeah, I think you just need the, the big enough table around it with as low a coefficient of friction as you can get. So the bulk of the quilt slides as... Well, yeah, because if you it's on Or you puddle it really well. Yeah, but if it's on an embroidery machine, that thing's got to move, so there can be nothing making it prevented from moving. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Good All right, luck let's, with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about this one. This is a, uh, the most controversial marking pen I think out there is the friction pens. And people love them or they hate them, and they, there's all kinds of 
groups online saying get rid of them, never use them again, they're horrible. Da, 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 da. What is your feeling on the friction pins? And do you know why it's controversial? Yes. So the gel ink in the friction pin is actually two parts. There's a gel part and then there's the disappearing part. And the gel part stays in the quilt, but it is clear-ish. So if you're using a friction pin on a darker fabric, you will sometimes see a white residue even after you apply the heat. And it, the it disappears color part by disappears. heat. Yes. Which, which this does not. means it can Don't come back this. with cold for when you store your quilts in the freezer. <laughs> or I could see if you ship them in, you know, an airplane and you're high altitudes and it gets cold in the cargo hold. Oh, that's that a good can, point. So for teachers that travel, I could definitely see where that would be a bad thing. Oh, I could see that, yeah. yeah. Do you use this? I do, but again, I don't mark quilts all that much. So I use it, um, let's see, if I'm doing marking out applique, I use pencil. I do use that. Pencil, oh, we should have said pencil. Pencil is very traditional marking tool. Yeah, but, well, because I've seen antique quilts with pencil markings mm -hmm. for the quilting. Yeah, but I can I ask that question too. Do pencil markings on antique quilts take away from the value of the quilt? And the answer is no. Because here's what appraisers do. They look at it and go, look, she marked this with pencil. You can still see it. Uh, it's not a <laughs> it's not a take away from the value. Yeah. So my use of the friction pen to me is tied to the purpose of my quilts, which is they are not the quilts that I do are usually not going into shows, they're not being heavily judged, scrutinized, right. or, you know, they're at my house. So if a line reappears, I'm just gonna hit it with an iron again. <laughs> and it'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I do, but I, I I don't use them all over the place. Oh, I know people are very against them, and there are lots of blogs out there that say why you should never use them. But I can't say that I don't use them. Yeah, I tell you where I've used it though is in hand piecing to mark some of my inside lines on the hand oh, piecing yeah. stuff. And then when it gets ironed, it goes away, but nobody's gonna know because it's from the back of the fabric, and uh, it's not. I don't think it's a big deal. So I use it. I don't use it as often as I use the blue. Blue's my favorite. But you can also use chalk. Like there's the tool where you can pounce the Oh, the, yeah, the pounces, yeah. And that's taken away by heat. Um, I think there's another tool that's taken away heat by or heat. or water, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I have a quilter's pounce, but I haven't used it. I have it, but. Gosh, in years. I haven't used it either. Have you ever used the Hera tool? What's the Hera tool? Uh, so it looks like a little plastic widget. It's about yay long, and there's kind of a sharpened edge, not enough to be a blade or anything, um, but you use it to sort of mark creases. Oh, a like quilt. a tailor's thing? Yeah. With the chalk dust? No, there's no chalk involved. All it does is put a, a, a precise crease. You know, you could draw with it. You could draw a straight line with it. You could draw no, a curve I mean, with it. This. Yeah. And, and, the, and I've seen people use chalk, like with the old tailor, mm -hmm. you know, chalk lines kind yeah. of stuff. Some people use tape. So use if you're doing, tape. yeah, if you're doing, doing straight line quilting, particularly on a domestic, or you could do it on that one would have been more helpful than the purple and then that pen. Is, like, is what this you're is, saying? Yes, this is a one inch tape. So you, and painter's tape doesn't leave a residue. For the, I love this painter's particular. tape. Lay it out, and then you stitch on one side, and you stitch on the other, and you peel it up. I use painter's tape. This is in my sewing room all the time. That's where I took it from. <laughs> <laughs> I use painter's tape all the time. For I, what? I, you know, if I'm. Taping, I don't know. For I taping. Use, that for is taping. Ingenious. I use it for taping. <laughs> taping I use lots of stuff. In our next segment. We tape like where tape. to put our thing. I don't know. I use it for our next segment. I do. Oh, okay. I'll talk about why. It's a multi-purpose right. so, display so, element. So, disappearing pin is my favorite. Okay. Blue. Yes. Not purple. Blue. Because it's water. And then you just keep a spray bottle next to the thing and I spray the quilt if I'm done. I'll do it while it's on the long arm. I'll mark it, stitch what I'm going to stitch, spray, bottle it, and then it'll be gone. Yay, done. Yes. You're so I'm, I'm looking at the quilt behind us like, so did you mark any of this? Mm, I did the first block. And by first block, you mean this particular unit? Yeah, just to make sure that that's what I wanted to do and I thought that that would look good. Um, and then once I do, well, I'll, I'll draw on paper a lot of times mm -hmm. my designs, like I'll sketch out the block on paper 
and then I will draw in my quilting line on the paper to see if I like that. Mm -hmm. And then I may take this and mark one block. But if I'm freehand drawing stuff through the long arm, I don't mark the whole thing. So you use paper. What I, I paper. have done, yeah. uh, old picture frames, I pop the glass out yes. and run tape around the edge so I don't cut myself and lay it on top yeah. and use a dry erase marker and draw yes. on the glass yes. to fiddle with it. You can do that. You don't have to use, uh, and you can use plastic, not glass. Too. Well, uh, but I had more picture frames than I had acrylic yeah. sitting around. Acrylic sitting around. <laughs> um, so, but I don't, um, but I, I use paper and draw it out. That way I can erase and I guess you could do it. I just never use the plastic on top of the long arm kind of thing. So what do you do then if you're all your marks, regardless of the pen, what do you do if they don't come out? Cry. Do the tears help break <laughs> yes. down the chemical yes. components of the ink? Yes, yes. No, I just keep, I just believe if you keep, you know, if this come out with water, I haven't put enough water on it yet. I will soak that thing to get it out. Have you ever tried Windex? I've not tried Windex. It sounds like my Greek wedding. Are you kidding? Windex takes out marks? Yes. <laughs> no, I haven't tried Windex. Do you use Windex? The blue Windex. I, well, again, because I don't mark that much, I haven't run into it. But yes, the blue Windex. And the reason why is that Sharon Chamber said, hey, use blue Windex. And then when she was here last oh, year. Oh, I do remember her saying that She now. like wrote, did marks with a bunch of different pins and then Windexed all of them. It was amazing. So. <laughs> In a pinch. In a pinch, if, you, if the tears don't cry of your enemies have not <laughs> taken the marks out of your quilt, try Windex. <laughs> Does it work with the friction? She tried it and it worked. Oh, I mean, wow. she like did heat to it and then did Windex and, you know. And it came out. Yeah. I wonder if we put it in the freezer. Like, I, I, I agree. I mean, with, we could science it up if we, we wanted to. We could put it but... in the freezer and test it. Science. Science. <laughs> Science is my favorite. Blue bin's my favorite. That's the one I use the most often. I haven't used Windex. <laughs> All right, templates, Jock. I think I, I think that's what I can talk about cool. marking quilts. Well, since we've been talking about the one behind us, we are going to show you guys a close-up of some of the quilting here in the double wedding ring behind us called Velveeta Cheese is Not Real Cheese. <laughs> we'll be back in just a minute. So <laughs> we talked about Lynn's area of expertise compared to mine, and now we're going to talk about one of mine that Lynn is like, whatevs, I got nothing on this topic. I got topic. nothing on this topic. I do have one thing on this topic. So, so we're talking about basting. Right. And the reason that Lynn has limited input on basting, because she quilts mostly on a long arm. Yes. So and I don't base I, Jack. Unless I make her not <laughs> quilt on a long arm. That can happen. I'm very intimidated by not quilting on the long arm. I really am. I am. <laughs> so, basting doesn't intimidate me, but... Oh, basting I, should, because basting is a giant pain in the tuchus. <laughs> like, it is the word. <laughs> uh. I think I would feel that way if I had to base big quilts. Oh, yeah. 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 But uh, since the only thing I based is... Turkeys. Small <laughs> turkeys. <laughs> and? I don't base those. I deep fry them, and they're quite tasty. Welcome to the South. Yes. Thank you. Um... <laughs> But never deep fry frozen turkey. Oh, that is not that good. is bad. It'll Don't explode. fry turkey inside either. That's how fires these, happen. These are these are Thanksgiving tips for the uh, yeah yeah. See. We're giving you a month out. Here's some yeah, right. meaningful tips if you celebrate Thanksgiving. Right. Canadian Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving already happened. Hope you guys didn't burn your houses down. <laughs> anyway, and and the Velveeta cheese is not real cheese is a Thanksgiving story, so we will send that out. Um, but I base small things that I know I'm not going to put on my long arm because they'd be a bigger pain to put on my long arm. <laughs> yeah. And now what Like I'll a postcard. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do that. But I don't base postcards. I Well, I guess I do. I use the spray fusible. Spray-based. Spray-based, yeah. I use fusible and spray-based. Uh, for small stuff, I'll do that. 
Um, I also will pin some things, like some some of the table runners of uh, time after time. I actually quilted on my domestic. Very crazy that I did that. Because um, they were wacky to put on my long arm. Because the angle of them and getting them to line, getting them flat is very critical on the long arm. Um, so I did quilt them on the domestic and I pinned them. And here's what I learned. Curved pins are important. Well, they do make it easier. Yes, because I don't have any, and I've been told that curved pins make it easier. And I have used them since then and went, oh, wow, these are nice. I may have just bought a thousand of them myself. Did you Be really? Well, because I've, since I got the Sweet 16, now I have this quilt pile up. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'll have two machines I can like quilt and piece, but not at the same time. There's still only one of me. That's, that's how I am. So I can't quilt as I am basting all these quilts, I'm like, I just ran out of safety pins. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to buy more. <laughs> but and you bought the curved. Yes, the curved. but they're not, you know, crazy curved. You know, like it's a big old smile. There's maybe a two to three degree curve. But it still makes a difference mm -hmm. in you're not sticking the table or the carpet well, or whatever. I am, but yeah. <laughs> that it's you're part of my process. basting on. <laughs> so do you ha now I did learn how to hand baste in a class. Yes. Which was an interesting um, process. And that's an herringbone thought, stitch. Yeah, it was a herringbone stitch and it was hand basting in, uh, I think it was a Sharon Schomburg class. Mm -hmm. And I, like I learned. I will get to apply that. And I've that. never done it since. I will get all. to apply that soon. So because you're going to apply it? Well, maybe I don't have to know that I bought more pens. <laughs> Ooh, delicious. Uh, so the English paper piecing quilt that I've been doing, right. that I want to hand quilt. I think I need to hand baste only because I know it's going to take me so long to quilt it. It's going to get scrunched up and descrunched and wadded up so many times. And unless I am, so my usual philosophy on basing is, well, if it's going to go in a fort, who cares if there's a pucker on the back because it's dark inside a quilt fort. <laughs> I still haven't had my quilt fort. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> uh, so when I, so I based on a floor, I have like one spot in my house that's big enough to do a twin size quilt basically. And I lay the backing out and get it smooth. And then I let the cats run through because they're all excited. And then I shoo them off and then I smooth it out again. <laughs> and then I tape do. and then I tape it down. I tape the corners and then I tape the middle of now, each side. Now is this side. on carpeted floor no, this or is on a hard, hardwood floor? Hardwood. Okay. I have based it on carpet, but it's not it doesn't end well. I would think that'd be difficult trying to Well because when you I have to get on top of the quilt to baste it. And you're hitting the carpet. Because my abs are not that good. Yeah, you. I pinned it to the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not fun. So yeah, this is primarily on a hardwood. This one. is now permanent carpet. Yeah, and then, so, if I were doing a show quilt, and I really wanted to be rigorous and make sure that there wasn't warping, because the, a lot of times what happens when you are floor basting is where the tape is securing it to the floor, then the rest of the quilt starts to pull in. So you get kind of this, you know, weird orange peel looking shape. So you could be oh. more rigorous about taping different parts of the edges. See, and on the long arm, I'm stretching it. Every right. time I'm rolling it down, it's stretched from right. here to here and it's stretched it on the side. So, so the, I keep that the tape tension to the floor is oh, what okay. recreates that stretching. Okay. Whereas you have, you know, a 12 inch length of or 12 inch length of, you know, a red snapper or something holding it firm on the side. Right. We don't have that on the floor. It's just a lot of tape. And then I'm like, well, I don't have time for all that tape and I don't want to waste all my tape. <laughs> so I do, you know, eight pieces max. If it were a show quilt, I tape more just to avoid that, that warping on the back. Um, and then the cat's come and frolic on it again. And sometimes the do. dog runs through. Okay. And then I have to go shoo everyone do off you, again. Do you um, do the... No, I don't lint roll it in lint between. Rolling. I figure it's just... It's part of the magic of the quilt. Okay. You know. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and then I roll the batting out, um, and then I kind of floof the quilt top, because again, there's a cat who's like, this is super neat, Mom. <laughs> How fun. Yeah. Um, and then once I get everything smooth, and then I start pinning from the middle. And is I, that important? Do you have to pin from the middle um, out? Like, that's critical. I find it helpful because despite my best efforts to get everything flat and laid out and not warped or skewed, when I start pinning from the middle and then kind of smooth out, that it helps. helps. As opposed to, I mean, if I started from the top center and then did the entire top and pinned kind of down the quilts, that would work. But 
you, that's you kind end of up the with long like different, arm yeah. technique is that you're t starting from the top or, you know, you can put quilts on the long arm sideways. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put them top to bottom. Um, and it depends if I put them top to bottom. I put the shortest width top right. to bottom so that I'm not having as many passes. Right. Unless the design I'm doing needs to, yeah. I need to have it looking. But you have a 12 foot frame, so you can do that. Lots of people's yeah. long arms only have maybe an eight or 10 foot frame. Yeah. And that's not possible for so it like helps. a twin size. Yeah. 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 So, but top to bottom, you have to quilt from top to bottom. You can't skip down and quilt here and then go back up and ask me how I know. <laughs> that's caused some problems. Well, technically you can. <laughs> you can. It will look jacked up. <laughs> Jackedupquilts.com. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so inside out pinning. So yeah, and that's just my personal preference. Um, and then, so I don't think I baste as heavily as is recommended for, you know, rigorous show quality. So how, like how They say far like you... hand width apart. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good measurement. Because I hate it when people go three inches. Well, that's exactly three inches. No, well, so I can do that. this part of your knuckle is one inch. So you put... You get a third hand. But how could it be one inch if if I'm not, you and I are not the same. That cannot be one inch on everybody. Totally is, by the way. Oh. <laughs> That's so good. Science, baby. <laughs> Everybody's knuckle is one inch from here I to mean, here. I mean, you get some big man hands, maybe it's different. Like, I bet Shaquille O'Neal's is like an inch and a quarter. <laughs> Shaq, leave us a comment. They, let us know. They have hands this big. I we were at maybe he's just got Phillips instead of three Arena, joints, he's and got they have five. all the basketball players' hands on the basketballs to show them how they bob the balls. And I put my hand up there. Their hands are like this. Like their fingers are way up here. I got tiny hands. Anyway, are okay, you bragging? One inch. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> there's no way that science that's right. I'm disagreeing with the science. <laughs> Apparently, we will have the. Friction thing, and we'll have people tell us. I believe you that ours is, but it can't be only quilters. Is it? Hmm. <laughs> this ruler is bunk. Because <laughs> I'm like, what, one inch from what? What is this? Bananas. Anyway, Bananas. we'll do some science later. <laughs> We think production staff, they'll <laughs> verify the sampling of in the room. Okay, so go ahead. So this one, is, so you do it with the part, yeah, which so I think is a good part. idea. Yeah. Our hands are close to the same. Yours are wider. Thanks. I'm wrong a delicate with that. flower. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> All right, so we're pinning so, out. Pinning out. And you so, do it with the part. Well, you're supposed to. I don't. Mine's more like two hands. <laughs> Maybe a you hand just and a half. judge it. You just I wing totally it because again, I'm going with my quilt number. Like, okay, what's this quilt going for? It's going to show. Yeah, I'll do hand width. If it's gonna be a baby gift, babies don't care. We've babies, all established that. Babies don't Science care. Science has proven that babies do not care. <laughs> they just don't. So, because babies don't care, I'm like, babies don't care. There's a pucker on the back of this quilt. Even if they did, they can't write me a letter. <laughs> so. Until they're 18. And to me, it's more of like, well, A, I'm running out of pins. B, I hate taking pins out while I'm quilting because I have to stop, needle down, take a pin out, and then keep going and hope that I wasn't on the middle of a curve and that I'm now in some weird, you know, yeah, I hate jiggy start, jag. Yeah. I hate running out of thread in bad places. <laughs> like right on a seam <laughs> or right on a, yeah, some places you're like, oh, or this much more to go. <laughs> dang it, dang it. Yeah. So that's my usual method. Okay. All right. So, but there's other ways to base too. Yes. Do you spray base? Um, I have, but I've gotten away from it simply because I, it, just the smell and the chemicals in, inside my house between, it's not good. you know, eight living creatures in my house. We don't all need to be sucking in those fumes, but I do have spray basting. I do use it for smaller wall hangings and I'll take it outside and do it. On yeah. Deck. That's when I do it. I actually do it in a... But what I have found with spray basting, despite my best efforts where I like get the back laid out and taped and spray and put the batting on and smooth it out, by the time I think I've got the top smoothed out and looking good and, you know, spray basted it down, I flip it over and look the back, the back's wrinkly. Like not folded wrinkly, but... But you're doing it outside, so you're doing it on what, concrete on your driveway or No, something? I'm doing it on a wood deck. Oh, okay. It's not like I'm standing on it because it's a small enough project, but I, so I've found that my back gets wrinkly with spray mm. basting. Yeah. So okay. I tend just to use spray basting for postcards. 
postcards, where it's small cumbersome stuff. to have. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd use spray basting for small stuff. Yeah. So, but there's this other, are there other kinds of, of basting that you do or have done? So for a while, there was uh, a trend sweeping through the modern guild of wall basting. And I think some of our members still do it, but that is essentially spray basting. But instead of on the floor, it is your backing fabric is taped to the wall. <laughs> Okay, and then you're spraying, and it. then you're spraying on the wall, and then you're you know sticking your batting on. And I never did this. I think this is what know. Krista Watson does. She's got a tutorial, I think, on her website. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't do it. So. And she uses a ruler, kind of like um, uh, the name of the thing that you use when you spackle. Okay. I can't remember what that is. It's a spackle ruler. Please, if you're listening to this, um, yell it out. A T? Is it a T ruler? No, it's um, it's like a regular six by twenty four inch quilting ruler. But it's oh, okay. better than just your hand because you get okay. 24 inches. Okay. Trowel. Trowel. I knew it would come to me. Okay. <laughs> trowel. So it acts like the trowel Jeez. to smooth things out. And... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Like yeah. a wallpaper. Yeah. Yeah. And then okay. you pin baste, you know, into your wall. And then you get to spackle your wall. Uh, <laughs> just in my experience of putting things in. I'm thinking, yeah, <laughs> you would be like messing up your paint on your wall and stuff. But apparently, maybe she's got a design wall she does I'm it against. against. I would end up pinning it to my design wall. <laughs> Oh, well, it's better there than the carpet. Just saying. I mean, yeah, because then it's already hung up on the wall and looks nice. Like, oh, look yeah, look, look it cool. up. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. It's got to be cool, dude, but yay. Yeah. But I found... Quilt um, muggles don't know. They don't. But I did find... <laughs> I did try that once for a quilt, and either I was exuberant with my spraying, <laughs> or I underestimated, like, I needed to have more backing because my wall ended up sticky. It's like the shadow <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, you walk down the hallway and you lean on it and then you're stuck to the wall. <laughs> be super cash. <laughs> so that was a problem. <laughs> that would be a problem. <laughs> I'm not well basted and I think I'm not gonna try it I, now. Yeah. I don't know that this is my jam. I think if you've got the right space for it, it works. My wall space was limited to like a hallway. And so it's not like I could back up and, you know, because yeah. the hallway is only what, 36 inches wide, standard hallway width. <laughs> all right any other kind of basting so since i do all mine on the longer i don't know yeah, i'm just asking questions any um, other kind of basting aside from turkeys turkeys wall basting wall basting so turkey basting there is the easier. method uh because you know i'm still okay to crawl around on the floor now even though according to the millennials that i worked with this week at work i am an old hag because i'm over 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but there is a way that you can either hand or pin based if you roll the batting and or roll the backing and the top of the quilt onto one by three boards. I've heard of this. And this is Sharon Schomburg technique. Yes, like there's she's a... got a video for it as well. Yeah. And it's it's the same I think it's the same video where she shows you the herringbone stitch to yeah. do the hand basting um, with thread. So this is essentially you get two one by three boards and you can either sand them well so they're not going to put splinters in your quilt or you That'd can good idea. cover them with muslin and like staple it on so you're not getting you know sawdust or any of that stuff. And then you just are very judicious about making sure there's no wrinkles or anything where you you know you roll the backing so it is you're rolling onto the wrong side of it. So when you lay the board down with the backing, it is wrong side up, like you would traditionally do with basting or loading oh, okay. on a long arm. Okay. And then for the top, you are doing it in reverse. So you're rolling onto the front of the quilt. So when you unroll it, the front of the quilt is facing up. Okay. And we will put and a link so to her video. Base, so you baste. So you put your, you know. So you're basting on the board. So your, you, you can do it at like a dining that, table. Oh, okay, okay. No, you don't do it onto the board. You do it on like a dining table, but it's neatly rolled onto these boards. So oh, you're not having to take up a whole floor space oh, with it. Oh, I see but what you But you could saying. sit at your dining table and do. And then so you baste ball. and then unroll and then mm -hmm. baste and then unroll. Yeah. Okay, okay, I get yeah. it. Cool. Yeah. So we'll put a link to that video because I'm sure. Have you ever that. used the very first quilt I've ever basted? <laughs> I don't think I've ever told you this story. So the first quilt I ever basted, mm -hmm. I went to Joanne's, as you do, to find whatever, like I knew I had to baste. And they had this little, it was like a, <gasps> yes. a gun. Like it's, you're putting price tags on everything. It's you're putting price tags on the quilt and these little red, like plastic things. And so I did that. That's how I basted the quilt is I put price 
<laughs> the price tag plastic all over this quilt. That's the one that I marked with the purple pen. <laughs> this, this quilt did not go well. I think I spent another day cutting out <laughs> all those stupid plastic things. Yes. And I don't think I found them all. I gave it to my sister yeah. and she said, I found some of these on the quilt. Is that okay to cut out? I was like, oh. <laughs> Well, and I found two. I didn't like those things at all. Because they are about three-eighths of an inch in width from the top yeah. bar to the bottom bar, there is a lot of shifting that occurs with Yes, those. I agree. So I cannot endorse that. Yes, I wouldn't endorse it. Because I had it. one, Cause and I think I ditched it. I they, like, oh, yeah, I think I ditched mine, too. They were not... Neat idea, but not... Not, yeah. no. I don't know. I don't know who puts it out, but I haven't, I haven't used it since, and don't plan to. <laughs> Yeah, that was, I think Angie was sleeping on the quilt and like, she, oh, nice. yeah, then you get these plastic things scratching you. It's well, like, no, the cats really like those little plastic tags, like whenever we buy clothes or anything. And oh, like, this is fun. Yeah. Which is super fun to find in a litter box later, just FYI. Oh, good to know. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, I think that's all that we have for this episode today. Um, we couldn't do this without 77 Peaches Enterprises, your one-stop shop for creative support. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches, Big Think Productions, Cotton Art Studio, and Hip to Be Square for being part of The Stitch. You can find links to their sites on our show site, thestitchtvshow.com. If you're interested in sponsoring the show, please email us at info at thestitchtvshow.com. Well, that's all we've got for this episode. If you enjoyed the show, please like us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and share it with your friends. Our next virtual show ends Friday, November 11th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast on our channel here on YouTube and Google+. My podcast, Hip to Be a Square, is out every Friday. And you can email us with any questions or <laughs> comments at info at thestitchtvshow.com. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. Tune in next time for more Quilting Chat with Friends.